are watching Bloomberg UTV. Hello and welcome to Financial Planner. It's a show where we take complex financial concepts and break them down into easy, digestible bits. My name is Smriti Rao. On the show today, we'll talk about women and investing. Now, it's a, a very common refrain, you know, you hear women say, oh, I don't handle the finances, my husband does, or my brother looks after my money. But on today's show, we'll talk about why it's important for women to know about money, where it comes from, where it goes, and how to invest it for your family. Harsh Rungta is the CEO of apnapaisa.com. He's my guest today. You can also be part of this conversation by emailing us at financialplanner at utvmoney.com. If you missed the show, you can always catch clips on uh, my Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash Smriti Rao. Harsh, welcome. So let's begin with our first query. And this is 22-year-old Alka who writes in from Mumbai. She says she's just started working and earns 45,000 rupees per month. She wants to start investing but doesn't know where to begin. In terms of her financial goals, she says very clearly she wants to get married in four years' time and she also wants to save up 10 lakhs for that. So where should she begin? So Harsh, this is really gratifying for us to get emails like this because this is young women writing into us and saying, look, I really like the show and I really want to start investing. We want to talk money as it were. So what sort of investment options should she be looking at? She's 22, presumably no responsibilities living with her parents. So I think, uh, excellent. As, as you said, somebody at that age, that's the right age to start thinking about yeah. what you should be doing with yeah. your money, yeah. whether male or female. That's really true. doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, so I think as far as the first goal is concerned, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, what she wants, 10 lakhs. Uh, in four years time. Mm -hmm. Now four years is not a very long time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, you know, having a, a major allocation to equity, which is mm -hmm. risky, uh, is not something that we would advise. Mm. Uh, I would say either go for 100% debt, in which case she needs to put in roughly about 18,000 rupees every month mm. into a debt fund. 18,000? Roughly. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. Or uh, she can also look at an 80-20 split, 80% mm. debt, 20% equity, mm. 14,000 into debt instruments could be small savings, mm -hmm. uh, could be bank recurring deposits, etc. Mm. Mm. And 3,500 into a, a top uh, equity fund or an index fund. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but that is about it. Those would be the two alternatives as far as this goal is concerned. This particular goal, yeah. Absolutely. But for anyone who is a first time investor, you know, Harsh, we keep talking to financial advisors and they say it's very important for you to have an emergency fund. What's your own take on that? How much should you put away uh, in your emergency fund, especially if you're just 22 and you've just started working? So typically, emergency fund requirements depends on your responsibilities as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so essentially, the emergency requirements may be smaller when you just started working, especially right. if you have a fallback option in terms of family support or whatever. Right. Right. Because uh, we must remember that too much of uh, contingency also yeah. harms your planning because uh, on the contingency fund, you can't really get too high a return. True. As a general thumb rule, you're talking six months expenses, uh, really. Uh, mm. as a contingency fund. Mm. Uh, in her case, one would need to check. But six months is pretty good. When you're starting out and have some family support and may not really need that kind of a uh, overall contingency, maybe even three months might be good enough. Mm. So three months at the minimum, six months at the most. Okay, three to six months over there. Now, you know, what? like I said, it's really gratifying when women write into us and women have a fear of investing to a large extent. You know, that's that's the common refrain at least we keep hearing. Um, so how should women be looking at their own investments? You know, the broader picture because they leave it to their husbands, their brothers, their fathers. Why is it important for women to look at their own investments? I mean, we do a great job and, you know, we're housewives, we run households, we stick to budget. But when it comes to investing in a mutual fund or getting life insurance, we tend to sort of step back a little bit. So what has your experience been with women and investments? So I think uh, what you're saying uh, is true to a large extent. Uh, I mean, even very successful women. Yeah. Uh, mm. And they're now 
I mean, in every field you see women being extremely successful. Right, right. Even they tend to leave finances to someone uh, else, to somebody else. Yeah. Maybe their fathers, brothers, husbands, etc. Right. But it's changing. Mm -hmm. Clearly, a lot more women are taking charge of their own finances. Mm -hmm. At the very least, they keep themselves informed of what is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, some of the issues that women face are in common with their male counterparts, mm -hmm. which is a huge inertia. Mm -hmm. on taking decisions yeah okay. and mm -hmm. i think there the advice is very similar get a good advisor yeah and make inertia work for you so discipline and systematic investments right can really take care of a lot of problems right so do protection buy insurance if needed mm -hmm. Take health insurance if needed hmm. and then do systematic monthly investments. I think that can take care of a lot of issues for women and they can actually make the inertia work for them. For them. Also, the other thing, Harsh, is, you know, I want to hear your thoughts on this. Women don't talk about money the way men do. Women don't talk about investments the way men do. Do you think more women should be encouraged to start, you know, reading up on magazines, perhaps just flip through them, get familiar with these terms and also start talking about money? It's completely okay. Okay, to talk about money and to talk about investments. Uh, uh, you, you get the sense that Indian women are more traditional and don't like to talk about money. So I think as I said, it's changing. I mm. mean, in fact, we are seeing a small reversing trend mm -hmm. where uh, because some women, again, I'm uh, being making that exception because some women have slightly more time right. uh, than say their husbands. Right. Uh, they typically are starting to do the research yeah. for their uh, financial requirement, whether it be a loan, yeah. whether it be a savings instrument, etc. Yeah. And they are really influencing and in many cases taking the decision. Mm. So I think the situation is already changing. They're all, so some of the readers of mm. our website or uh, financial magazines or viewers of mm. programs such as these mm. are already a lot of women. Are, are a lot of women. And also, before I go into the break, I just want to talk about a couple of investment myths that surround women. And these are things that get tossed about lightly. But remember, this is not true for women and investing. You know, one of the big myths is women are bad at investing. I have no idea where that comes from, but that's a complete myth. What's your take? What would you say about that? I mean, it's, it's like any other generalization. Yeah. I mean, sure, some women may not be good at investing. Some but men, some men not, would, would not I think be good at investing. More men would be bad at investing than right. women. I mean, if at all there is an issue, if at all there is an issue, it is about women not thinking about investment. Yeah. I don't think there is an issue about women who think about investment yeah. and are bad at it. Right. So that's a big generalization over there. Women spend, not save. I think that's pretty insulting when, when people make that generalization and they say, oh, women, you're just burning up the cards, the credit cards are not really saving. But women, like I made the point before, we're very good at running households. We're very good at, you know, having that budget and making things work within that budget. So that's a big myth if someone says that to you show them the door so women's idea of saving is in fds what would you say about that you see a lot of women putting their money away because they think fixed deposits are more safe so not a bad deal as i said mm. uh, if amounts are very small uh, mm. and uh, fd is not a bad deal is very easy very convenient you can go to your next door friendly yeah. bank yeah. Uh, but I, I would advise women, that's a nice way to start. That's not a bad way to start at all. But I think as you get the discipline that comes into uh, your whole fabric, as the women become more disciplined, they should look at shifting to mm -hmm. modes of investment that give higher return. Mm -hmm. See, one thing about women, they are very disciplined. They are very again, disciplined. a generalization, yeah. again, a generalization. But this time around, I think it's probably true, at least from the little bit that we know about women investors. All right. And they should make that discipline work for them. Right. And you have a personal anecdote to share with us, I presume. But we'll talk about the great story that Harsh has for us about how women can be really disciplined and how they're really good at putting money away. We'll talk about what you can do when you put money away. How do you make that money work for you? We'll touch upon that and gold, our favorite topic. That's coming up in just a little bit. Stay with us.